All right, I'm Stephen Benoon, and you're watching Israeli News Live. And those of you on live stream, I thank you for bearing, bearing with me through all of this here. It has been a trial there. Satan has certainly been on the move to try to stop this news broadcast, and uh, something other happened here, and everything was just thrown in there all at one time. Anyway, we're talking about the Chinese and the USA possibly going to war in the very near future. But it's not just China and the U.S., it's also Russia and China as well. Uh, and, and what's going to happen, by the way, the reason why this war is pretty much getting, becoming an, an inevitable situation is because the Obama administration is determined to have an excuse to either shore up the economy or to have something to blame the, the collapse of the U.S. economy on. So this is what some of the analysts are saying here. So let me take you right to some of the articles here. I've kind of been going through several of these and I want to share them with you. The Telegraph uh, just came out today and this is based on an article that I've already seen that's about a month old out of, out of uh, China's own uh, state-ran uh, media. It says, U.S.-China war is inevitable unless Washington drops demands over the South China Sea. Uh, the warning from the state-run uh, Chinese newspaper as Beijing reveals plans for development of disputed South China Sea Island. Uh, the article here is by Julian uh, Riel uh, in Tokyo. It said China's armed forces are to extend their operations and its air force uh, will become an offensive as well as a defensive uh, force for the first time and a major shift policy that will strengthen fears and accidental conflict. A policy document, the, the, statement, the State Council or Cabinet said China faced a grave and complex uh, array of security threats justifying the change. Now, I actually read the article from the Beijing paper uh, originally, and China flat out says in there that if the U.S. does not pull back soon, it will be a war inevitable with the United States. Now, that was what they stated there, and with it being a state-run uh, newspaper, that threat is not just taken lightly, and, uh, and, and it's kind of interesting because uh, the U.S. has actually been very provocative with Russia as well, and Putin has been trying to reframe himself from getting involved in any war there. Now, I know that there's, there's rhetoric on both sides. I'm not siding with either one in this case here, but I do know from, from uh, as an eyewitness on the ground in Eastern Europe that four months ago, Washington had already sent tanks, uh, jets, and everything else into Eastern Europe onto Russia's doorstep. Uh, and it was only after that Putin, who put together 40 plus more ballistic intercontinental, intercontinental ballistic missiles, that the president comes out and says, now we will send uh, lethal weapons into East Europe in order to protect the, uh, the East Europeans. Well, that wasn't true. We'd seen it for ourselves. We'd seen the convoys on the on the on the trains going by of tanks, U.S. tanks headed for Poland and, and other uh, countries there, Lithuania. We have friends that live in Lithuania that have stated that the U.S. Uh, has fighter jets flying overhead doing all types of missions there. Uh, so there certainly is a war that is brewing, and for quite some time I haven't quite figured out why. Is it is he just doing a war for the, for the for the purpose of the Pope or what? Well, in another article I'm going to share with you here in just a moment, you'll find out that it's not just the Pope here. Of course, of course it could a lot have to do with that too, but we're finding out that Obama is doing this in order to preserve the U.S. economy. Um, it goes on to say here, the People's Liberation Army, including its Navy and Air Force, will be allowed to project power further beyond its, its own borders uh, at the sea and more assertively in, the air, uh, in order to safeguard its maritime positions, uh, the white paper stated. Now, keep in mind, China has built seven artificial islands down in the sea here, but of course, so do the Philippines and other nations in that area too are making artificial islands. Uh, so it's kind of interesting the way, that, the way this has been going. So the Navy will add open seas protections to a traditional remit of offshore waters defense, it said. Uh, the, the posture risk escalating the tensions over disputed islands in the South China Sea and elsewhere in the Pacific where the United States is determined to protect the interests of the allies like Taiwan and the Philippines. Uh, and certainly these countries do want the protection of the United States because they don't want to come under communistic control of China. But then again, the communistic control of China or the, or, or the communistic types of beliefs that China shares 
puts them very much as a strong ally with Russia. Vladimir Putin and them, they share both the same interest in mind, a communist uh, regime, and they will certainly bind together in a war against the United States and NATO and their allies. The only problem is, is the only superpower involved in NATO is the United States. Whereas China and Russia, Russia is its own superpower, and China is not far from behind being a superpower of its own. So to make it very difficult for NATO and their allies to be able to work with the U.S. to fight off such a huge war once something like this does break out. It says, only last week a U.S. aircraft ignored repeated warnings from the Chinese military to fly a reconnaissance mission over the island. Uh, said Global Times and the tabloid newspapers run by the Communist Party said that China might have to accept there would be conflict with the United States. If the United States' bottom line is that China has to halt its activities, then a U.S.-China war is inevitable in the South China Seas. That's what the paper actually stated. That's what I had read myself, said the paper, which is often seen as a mouthpiece of a hardline nationalist in the government in Beijing. Um, state media reported on Tuesday that Beijing had begun building two lighthouses on reefs in Spartley Islands and smattering of the outcrops that are claimed by an array of countries, including not only China, but also Vietnam and the Philippines. Last month's satellite imagery revealed the Chinese had almost completed an airstrip on another reef, uh, Fairy, uh, Fairy Cross, while they are turning another rock mischief reef into a full island uh, through land re uh, recla uh, reclamate reclamation. The Global Times article described the construction of the runways, harbor facilities, and buildings on the disputed Spartway Island on the nation's most important bottom line. Speaking at a press conference in Beijing, Yang Yang uh, Yugun, a spokesman for the Defense Ministry, uh, dismissed international criticisms of China's policy in the South China Sea, claiming the work was the same as building roads and homes of a mainland China and that it would benefit. Uh, the whole international society. From the perspective of sovereignty, there is absolutely no difference. Uh, he said, adding that some external countries are also busy meddling in South China Sea's affairs. Uh, now, let me take you though to another one. This is from Press TV uh, that says uh, for war, uh, U.S. is preparing for war uh, on China and Russia to save banks. That's what the analyst says here. And, um, and the analyst that I'm speaking about here happens to be uh, none other than, than Michael Billington. And I'd like to share with you this right here. This is um, something that is shocking, uh, to say the very least. I actually listened to the interview that he, that he had given there, but uh, I can give you the gist of it here in the article that was also printed on their site. The United States is preparing for a possible war against China and Russia aimed at preventing the collapse of Western banking system and an American political commentator and activist says, Michael Billington. Uh, Asia in, uh, editor for the Executive Intelligence Review and author of Re Reflections of an American Political Prisoner, the repression and promise of La Roche movement made the remarks in a phone interview with Press TV on Thursday. Now he also goes so far as to say that Obama should be removed from office by political means. Well, of course, we do have an election coming up, but the question is, is, will the election come in a timely enough manner in order for someone else to be voted in that might not be so aggressive in wanting to do a war with Russia and China? But then again, if you look at the candidates, every one of them, both Democrats and Republicans alike, are all calling for firm and strong actions against Russia. Even Jeb Bush, who is someone that I believe that would more than likely win the election if it, if it did come down to uh, him and Hillary, it's quite obvious his remarks as he stated when he was in Europe recently that Russia, the people of Russia are good people. They should be part of the European Union, he stated. The only problem is, is we have to deal with the rogue regime that's running the country now. That was Jeb Bush's comments about President Putin and what should be done with him. Well, Putin was right in TASS news agency recently when he says that, they, that there are countries that are determined to undermine the sovereignty of Russia. And he told a pre his security press meeting there that they could not allow this to happen. And as he stated, you know what we must do. Well, that seems pretty obvious that uh, Putin also is preparing for a war, a showdown with the United States. 
and he certainly has been working with the Chinese government doing all types of war games and war exercises all around the world showing their strength and their solidarity in doing a war against the United States. A war that the United States probably could handle to some degree, but nonetheless, it would be very costly war indeed because you are talking about superpowers going head to head. And of course, the Chinese control the chips that are in the F, uh, some of the latest F, uh, F, uh, F fighters that the United States has. I believe it's an F-535 or something of that nature there. The Chinese are the ones that made the chips that do the navigation system in there. What if a Chinese hacker decides to get control of that? It's also been brought out in the news as well. Anyway, here, Michael Billington, Billington goes on to say here on Wednesday, U.S. Defense Secretary Ashton Carter warned China to stop development man-made islands on the South China Sea, vowing that the United States would not stop patrolling international waters and airspace in the Asia-Pacific region. There should be no mistake the United States will fly, sail, and operate uh, wherever international law allows, as we do uh, all around the world, Carter said. Um, at the U.S. military's joint base at Pearl Harbor. Billington said China's attempt to build an island in the South China Sea is not that unusual since the Philippines and the Vietnam are also doing the same. Uh, so I get the point he's trying to bring out here is that why is the United States singling out China for building it when the other countries that the United States is, uh, is already an ally to are doing the exact same thing. He goes on to say, U.S. Bar uh, President Barack Obama is trying to keep his focus on a widely advertised shift to Asia, Asia, which he has pursued since 2011. The White House argues that no region is more important to Americans' long-term uh, interests than Asia. Uh, the point that has to be made is that the, that the Chinese, like Russians, are very, very clear that the United States and their NATO allies are in a war mobilization preparing for war on Russia preparing for war on China, Billington said. Uh, he goes on to say, there is a general recognition growing that the driving force for this war is the utter collapse of the entire Western banking system, he added. Greece is now uh, ready to, de to default. It has made this very clear. The euro will not survive. Obama here at home has failed to, rever to reverse a decline in the employment in production and infrastructure in the United States, and we are now facing a collapse far greater than that of, 2000, of the 2008 collapse, the analyst said. Uh, he, and the view from London and Washington and New York is, is we, have, we have to go to war. We cannot allow the BRICS uh, alliance between Russia, China, India, South Africa, and, and most of Latin America creating new financial institutions to take away our ability to loot the resources in the developing sector, Billington noted. So they are going for war, he stressed. Washington, as he goes on to say, accuses Beijing of undergoing a massive land rec reclamation program in Spartly uh, Archipelago of the South China Sea and says China territorial claims of the man-made island could further uh, militarize the region. China knows that every military offensive against them uh, since the time of the British Opium War came through the South China Sea, Billington said, they are concerned. He said, Chinese have repeatedly offered the Southeast Asian nations to work jointly on development of, of, of the resources, which have been soundly rejected by the Filipinos who, have, who, who are functioning as absolute puppets of Obama. War plans and, in fact, turning their islands into a massive U.S. military basis. He went on to say that there is no reason for the confrontation between the United States and China other than the fact that Obama wants a war rather than his uh, controllers in London and all Wall Street want war, and Obama will do it if he is not removed from office. The U.S. is already using Philippines as a military base for war. This can be stopped, he says. It must be stopped, he says, but it is going to have to be stopped here in the United States, Billington went on to emphasize here in the article. The thing is, is what's, what's very interesting in all of this here, is that it is a claim that the war would be started by the United States and NATO and their allies because of Russia and China and the other nations that are starting to come together, Iran, etc., are actually working on putting together their own global economy. Well, if they were to do that, that would totally unravel the U.S. dollars being the reserve currency 
and that's the only reason the U.S. dollar has not collapsed as of yet. But of course, if they can get a war going, that would actually change all of that. And maybe this is why the Vatican is behind it as well, because the Vatican, although they do control all the gold of the world, is not interested in bailing every country in the world out of their problems. But yet, rather, they would like to do a redistribution of wealth. That's exactly right. War comes along, they'll have a reason to be able to freeze all the bank accounts in order to be able to take control of everyone's assets, and then maybe at the end of the war then they'll redistribute what they say is left over and deal with it that way. Who really knows what's going to happen, but the thing is, it's a serious time that we're living in. Very serious time. And I, I, don't, I don't know what else to say to you guys. It, we're, we're, it's, it's getting very interesting to say the least. Now there, there are a lot of analysts that are saying they don't expect it quite as of yet. Uh, some of them are, are putting this off all the way to 2020 is when they expect this war to escalate and get out of control. That's hard to say. It depends on how long the U.S. economy will stay propped up in the way it's going because basically all we're doing is borrowing more money and more money and more money and eventually somebody's going to want their money paid back. And when that happens, and it's no doubt the war will have to come at that point there. Not very good to say the least. At any rate, if you like the news that we're bringing to you and it's a blessing to you, we ask you that you would take, especially in this particular type of time that we're living in, stand up and support this, this ministry as well because it works all hand in hand. The news we do, we try to do a prophetic insight as well as the Bible teachings that we're doing. It's a critical time. And we're, as we've said recently, in less than two weeks, we'll be back on the front lines, right there on the doorsteps of Russia, where it's all going to break loose first. Then back into Israel, where yet again another war is right on its heels. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom. Shalom.